video we're going to walk through something that we discussed in class which is the spatial join and in this scenario that we're working through in the tutorial we have a couple of layers in our table of contents that we want to essentially combine attributes from to get something else and the example here is uh, that we're working with neighborhood polygons that uh, are from the city of Pittsburgh and we also have a layer that represents uh, a subset of crime offenses of a particular type and for a particular uh, period in time and what we want to do is we want to create a new feature class or a new layer that uh, represents the neighborhoods but also represents how many crime offenses actually fall within each particular polygon. So the spatial join is really good for that. And to get started, what we have to do is find the spatial join tool. Um, I have the analysis tab highlighted here at the top, and you'll see that it's one of the options available here under tools. There's a couple other ways to get to it. I can click on my toolbox, and if I do a search for spatial join, it'll come up as one of the many tools that I can use in the analysis tools toolbox. Uh, there's another way that I can get to it. Um, because I want to count the number of crime offenses that actually are happening within each neighborhood, if I right click on the neighborhood layer and go down to joins and relates, we'll see that one of the tools I have available to me is the spatial join. So I'll go ahead and select it from here and when I do so we'll see that it opens up here, the tools available to me here in the geoprocessing pane and because I right clicked on neighborhoods I see that the target features has already been selected for me. Remember the target features are essentially the layer in which you're going to be trying to uh, join data from another layer into to create essentially a third layer. So the target features in this case should be neighborhoods. My join features will be my crime offenses which I'll select here from the drop down menu and my output feature class will get a default name from ArcGIS which I can certainly change to something more meaningful for myself so I'll call this one PGH Neighborhood Crime and I'm gonna leave the rest of it here uh, you'll want to keep keep all target features selected so that if for some reason any of these polygons and you'll see there are a couple of them here that don't have any uh, crimes uh, within the subset that I've selected falling within a particular polygon you're not dropping the polygon next I'm going to go down here to the output fields and obviously both these feature classes have a lot of additional fields that I don't really need for my final analysis. I could certainly leave them all in if I want, but what I'd rather do is go ahead and just start removing some of these that I don't really need and won't really make a lot of sense once I go through the spatial join process. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these fields until I come to name because name represents the name of the neighborhood which I want to retain and I'm gonna do the same thing and essentially get rid of all the rest of these until all I'm left with is name. Now remember we're doing a spatial join so it's already going to be essentially um, creating another field within my new feature class that represents a count for how many points it's finding within each polygon. But the other thing that I want to retain in this new feature class that I'm creating is the name of the neighborhood so that I've got something nice to symbolize these areas on once I have that count field. So for the merge rule I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as first and it's basically what it's going to do is the first time that it encounters that um, particular attribute um, for the polygon name it's going to assign that uh, into my new output feature class. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the tool
All right, so now that that's complete, I'll see that I get this pop-up telling me that uh, basically with the parameters and any particular messages that might be important to me after running the tool, which I can close. And I can go ahead and close this uh, geoprocessing window as well. And what I'll notice here is in my table of contents, I now have this new layer called PGH Neighborhood Crimes, which is essentially the feature class that I just created. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my old neighborhoods layer and the crime offenses layer. And let's just quickly go ahead and look at the attribute table and see what we have. Okay, great. So we can see now that I have this join count column, which is representing essentially the number of points that it encountered when it did the spatial join, and I've still retained the name of the neighborhood. So if I want to kind of spot check this and just make sure it basically looks correct, I can go ahead and turn on crime offenses again, and I can select, for example, say the Northview Heights neighborhood. And if I select this row and right click, I have the option here to go ahead and zoom to it, and we'll see that now within the selected polygon, the count field that I have represented here is showing two, uh, two crime offenses, and I'm saying, yeah, that, that looks correct to me. So everything looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off crime offenses again, and now that I have that join count field, I've got something that I can begin symbolizing uh, these, uh, this new layer with. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and right-click on it, go down here to symbology and I'm going to change from single symbol to my graduated colors and it's going to pull in my join count field which of course I could change but that looks good for now I'm just gonna leave that as it is and close out of my symbology window and if all works out well then now I should see my neighborhoods symbolized with essentially a count of crimes by a neighborhood. And that's it. So I hope this helps explain the, uh, the spatial join tool a bit. If you have questions, certainly feel free to post them. Thanks. We'll see you next time.